this is the time now, you know, uh, which is um, fully ripe to, to start this dialogue. We have lost all of it. Nobody's farm is paid. So it's high time uh, that uh, we all came together. Hello, you're listening to Africa Science Focus, a side of net production. In March of 2020, when East Africa was first hit by the global coronavirus pandemic, it was already dealing with an unexpected desert locust plague. Now, nearly a year on, the region is bracing itself for yet another invasion. With 13 million people already facing severe food insecurity across Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, Djibouti and Eritrea, millions more now face the loss of food and income. Africa Science Focus investigates what the future holds for communities in the region. Reporter Brooke Abdu speaks to farmers in Ethiopia and Dan Koth reports from Kenya. Dan Koth begins our program. Thank you very much for having me. My name is Keith Cressman. I am the Senior Desert Locust Forecasting Officer uh, at uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, and I'm based in Rome, Italy. So what is your take on the latest FAO update that shows that there is an upsurge of uh, locust in the Horn of Africa and East Africa? Yes, I've just put out a recent update this week on the on the situation. As you can see, there has been a, a resurgence, a reinvasion of desert locust swarms uh, coming into southern Ethiopia and into uh, northern parts of Kenya. So essentially, those swarms they started to arrive in northeastern Kenya on about the 21st of December, and since then, several swarms have been arriving nearly every day. So as we speak today, there have been immature swarms reported in seven counties of Kenya. Now in Ethiopia, those swarms uh, also moved out of those breeding areas in the east of the country and they moved towards the southern region of Oromayo and in uh, SNPPR. They will stay there basically wait for a little bit of rain uh, to, to fall in the next couple of weeks, which will allow them to complete their maturation, and then they'll be ready to lay eggs. And as you know, desert locusts, the eggs, once they're laid, they take about two uh, weeks to hatch. They're usually laid in, in open, sandy soil areas. So basically that means from now until um, March or April, there will be desert locust infestation, swarms and breeding in northern counties of Kenya, some of the central counties of Kenya, and in southern Ethiopia. Uh, Keith, what would be the socioeconomic impact of uh, this new locust resurgence in this country? Uh, taking into account the current economic situations in these countries, uh, especially in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, you know, in general, just in, in the Horn of Africa itself, you know, there's so many different kind of uh, shocks that have occurred in the past several years, starting with three years of drought up until 2019. That was then followed by uh, heavy rains and floods. In some parts of the region, there's chronic um, insecurity. And then in 2019, we had the desert locust swarms. And then in 2020, of course, we had COVID-19, as well as more desert locust swarms. And when you have so many different shocks at the same time, of course, this will have dramatic impacts on crop production, on food security, as well as um, pasture areas and, and, you know, people's livelihoods. Uh, what, what are some of the control measures that have been applied so far and why have they achieved the desired result and what can be done differently? Yeah, so starting um, in early uh, 2019, aerial control operations uh, were undertaken in the three main countries that had been affected by this desert locust upsurge in the Horn of Africa. So Somalia, Ethiopia, and in Kenya. Uh, last year, during 2020, we had a, a total of about 28 aircraft that were in operation. They flew more than 6,000 hours looking for locusts and, and treating locusts by the air. Now, these operations treated something like 1.5 million hectares in those three countries. So that, that's a huge area. And that saved probably, uh, in our best estimates, about 3.1 million 
metric tons of crops. And you know, that's enough food to feed 18 million people for an entire year. And it's not just food that we're protecting, of course, it's also milk production. You know, pastoralists are very important um, in the Horn of Africa with their goats, their camels, and, and their cattle. So very important, more than um, 620 million liters of milk production loss, you know, was averted. Um, in addition, more than 200,000 households have received livelihood assistance. You know, what does that mean? It means crop packages, you know, farmers that may have planted early in the season and then the locust swarms came in and, and destroyed their crops. You know, seed was provided to them so that they could replant. The economic benefit of all of this intervention last year alone in 2020 is estimated to be something about 1.2 billion dollars now the cost of these operations the cost of this intervention so it's just it's the control operations as well as the the uh, livelihood assistance is, is something just under 200 million dollars you know that has been received you know from from our from our donors so that you know that's been a very valuable investment so what are some of the lessons learned and what are the opportunities uh, uh, going forward? Well, there's, there's a lot of opportunities to, uh, going forward. Of course, you know, we're always looking, how can we make the, the control operations um, more effective, um, more efficient, and of course, more safe? Now with the current upsurge and considering um, the changing climate, it appears that the Horn of Africa will be facing more desert locust um, resurgencies, more invasions than they have in the past. And so if that's the case, mechanisms need to be put into place at the national level to be able to monitor the situation, of course, respond as early as possible, but also then to respond as quickly as possible when a country like Kenya becomes invaded. Kenya does not have a national locust program simply because they don't face locusts often enough. You know, the last time they, they saw locusts on this magnitude was, was 70 years ago. This is the time now which is... Um, fully ripe to to start this dialogue with our partners with the national authorities to establish you know a national locust program um, in Kenya a one in Somalia to strengthen those that exist um, in other countries in the region our reporter in Ethiopia Brooke Abdu was able to speak to Zainab Mohammed a farmer in the country's Amhara region new reports from the region say locust swarms are already appearing Speaking in Amharic, Zainab explains the devastation she experienced during last year's locust swarms. Africa Science Focus editor Jackie Opara Fatoye summarizes in English. <laughs> I had planted green mug, sugum, and corn, which we thawed on for three to six months, including the April harvest. We have lost all of it. Mine was a total of 1,100 hectares of land. It is not only me. Many have more than that at various locations. Nobody's farm is spared. We just have the cups of our corn on the farmland. The government sprayed chemicals from the air and land, but the locust is, is very powerful and it keeps coming after spring. We are now praying for the avoidance of future invasion. Who knows? It could come again. The farmers here are hoping to farm green mug and turf in the coming raining season, but we don't have seeds as all is destroyed by the infestation. Zainab Mohammed explaining the distressing and difficult reality that she and many other farmers are facing as locusts again threaten crops. While small locust outbreaks can occur in parts of East Africa, this is the worst plague in 70 years. Balana Negese is the Crop Protection Director at Ethiopia's Ministry of Agriculture. He tells Africa Science Focus that up until 2019, the locusts had been manageable. Brooke Abdu translates into English from Amharic. Okay. It has never been beyond our capacity of prevention, but it's expanding to various parts of the country. The Afar region was not affected in the past, but winter breeding has brought the locusts there. 
this shows that the locusts movement is changing and it's reaching newer places. The type of chemical we use is ultra low volume or ULV which is not diluted in water. People who conduct the spraying are made to wear protective equipment. If there is a high concentration of the pesticide at one place because of improper spraying, it could amount to a volume that can kill animals. We prevent people or animals from entering areas where pesticides are spread. We also distance children and pregnant women from these sites and we notify them before conducting the spraying. These chemicals are registered by FAO and the level of their toxicity is measured. These chemicals do not stay on the ground for more than 10 days. When it comes to insects like bees, chemicals used to kill locusts can surely kill bees, but we take precautionary measures for this. We know of biopesticides. These are environmentally friendly chemicals. The problem with these chemicals is that they can't prevent an upsurge of locusts. They can only kill locusts at their early stage of development. Hence, it either kills a small amount or none of the grown-ups. Djibouti and Somalia use these biopesticides and this is not killing all the locusts. This results in the migration of locusts from these countries to Ethiopia, posing huge challenges for us, forcing us to spray large volumes of pesticides. Therefore, our pesticides would make the prevention mechanisms useless at the stage of occurrence we have. Because of this, we do not use biopesticides. While food and agriculture experts have been searching for chemical and organic pesticides to reduce the locust threat, others are looking to artificial intelligence for solutions. For as long as we don't have a solution for these pests, you can always expect an attack to come or to strike at any time. And so it's high time uh, that uh, we all came together and, and uh, supported new approaches to fight locusts. This is John Rocco, the head of the agriculture company and social enterprise Selina Wamusi, which serves countries across the region. John helped create the early warning tool Kuzi, the Swahili name for the bird that eats locusts. We have developed a solution known as Kuzi. Kuzi is an AI-powered tool that uh, monitors locusts, alerts farmers in advance, thus enabling them to prepare. It uses a machine learning model trained on the satellite data of soil moisture, wind, vegetation index, and other factors that affect locust breeding, swamp formation, and movement. Farmers receive this information through SMS alerts received in their local languages, currently in Amharic, Swahili, and Somali. This is a solution developed in-house by some of the finest talent that we have in the continent, and it's a team and talent that we are very proud of because they have given a solution that is going to take out a, a big trouble from our farmers. We are lucky to live in an age where we have very powerful computational resources. Our technology is growing at a very fast rate. And we can take advantage of these available resources, then it should not be very difficult to find solutions to our existing problems and even future problems. John Rocco, ending our episode on the renewal locust threat in sub-Saharan Africa. The desert locusts are such an important issue that we don't have time for our usual question and answer this week. But we will be back to answer your science question next week. Contact us from anywhere in the world via WhatsApp on plus 254-799-042513. You can subscribe to our program and download episodes at www.sidev.net. Today's program was edited by Jackie Opara Fatoye and Fiona Broom and produced by Harrison Lewis with reporting from Dan Koth and Brooke Abdu. I'm Sally Amutabi. See you next Wednesday. This program was funded by the European Journalism Center through the European Development Journalism Grant Program with support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation.